contradiction to uh, the timeline that the White House has laid out in terms of uh, what we knew when about Rob Porter. Can you speak to what the uh, the director said? Uh, he seemed to indicate that first that you would have known about this might have been in March, then again in June, then November, then in January when their case was actually closed. Look, um, we explained the process extensively last week. The White House Personnel Security Office, staffed by career officials, received information last year and what they considered to be the final background investigation report in November. But they had not made a final recommendation for adjudication to the White House because the process was still ongoing when Rob Porter resigned. In the view of Personnel Security Office, the FBI's July report required significant additional investigatory field work before Personnel Security Office could begin to evaluate the information for adjudication. As Director Ray said, information was still coming to the White House Personnel Security Office in February. So just to be clear that, in the, the July report, if not back to March, was there information contained in those reports about the allegations about Rob? I wouldn't have access to that information. I wouldn't know the answer to that, John. Sarah, Krista. I just want to drill down on one important fact, because you and Raj, and you just said this again, that the investigation was ongoing. Christopher Ray said it was closed in January. So who's telling the truth here? Uh, both. As I said, uh, the FBI portion was closed. The White House Personnel Security Office, uh, who is the one that makes a recommendation for adjudication, had not finished their process and therefore not made a recommendation to the White House. And let me just clarify one more point. You said yesterday that you didn't get any paperwork from the FBI. Chris Ray said that he did submit paperwork at all of the various moments that were. Again, and that would come through the White House Personnel Security Office, which had not completed their investigation and not passed that information to Would the you White House. that you did receive paperwork? Again, the White House, I think you need to be very clear about there's multiple groups here. Uh, the White House Personnel Security Office, which is staffed by career officials, would have may have received information, uh, and, but they had not completed their process and made a recommendation to the White House for adjudication. Sarah, finally, who's, who allowed John Kelly, or Rob Porter rather, to stay here without permanent security clearance? Uh, I, I can't comment on specifics of that other than what we've already said on that matter. And Sarah, Cecilia. Can you answer questions about Sorry, Kristen, I'm going to keep moving because we've got a, a short time fuse here today. Is the White House still maintaining that John Kelly really had no idea about these allegations of domestic abuse until this story broke? I can only give you the best information that I have, and that's my understanding. And does the president believe the women? Uh, again, the president takes uh, all of these accusations very seriously. He believes in due process. Above everything else, he supports the victims of any type of violence uh, and certainly would condemn any violence against anyone. But we still haven't heard him say that himself. The cameras were in front of him today. I, again, the president dictated to me specifically that comment yesterday, which I read out to you guys. Zeke. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah uh, two for you. First, uh, can you speak to, did anyone at the White House Personnel Security Office have any communications with any one in the West Wing about Rob Porter's clearance uh, between when the FBI started submitting its interim reports and, and, and I'm not aware of any communication. I can't sure. say definitively, but I'm not aware of any and communication. Then, and then the secondly on Capitol Hill today in an interview, interview with the Associated Press, DNI Coates uh, said that those with interim security clearances should not be granted, should have limited access to classified information rather than access to the full gamut that uh, a full clearance would provide. Um, can you speak to whether that is a current practice right now for the large number of, uh, uh, for the significant number of, uh, of, of officials, whether it be the West Wing or the broader White House complex, President's aides who don't have permanent security clearances, do they, or do they have limited access to classified information? I can't speak to whether people have interim or permanent security clearances at all and therefore can't comment on the process. Uh, we, we are following the process that has been used by uh, previous administrations uh, and we would rely on the law enforcement and intelligence communities to determine if that process needed to be changed. Well, the DNI suggested that it would, would be changed. And they would be the ones that would make that determination and play a role in what those changes would look like. Sarah, Josh. Sarah, are you saying that um, on four different occasions, FBI obviously said that it, it made the White House aware of the allegations. Uh, 
And the White House said, official said that until Tuesday night, they did not realize the extent of the allegations. Should someone of the FBI or the Personnel Security Office be punished for not telling White House officials? How can how can those two things be? That's that's something that would be well beyond uh, my scope to Where determine. Are they upset, Josh? though that they weren't told? If everyone knew, but no one in the senior staff found out. I, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't asked him about that specifically. Matthew. Sure. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, Raj, the other day, said last week that the situation could have been handled better. Yesterday, you echoed that, said the situation could have been handled better. Today, the chief of staff said it was all done right. Can you explain, did, does the White House think this Rob Porter situation could have been handled differently, or do you guys think this was all done right? Was Look, as I said yesterday, I think every day we come here, we do the very best that we can, and every day we can do better than the day before. But and we're going to continue to try, strive for that. We're, we're uh, humans, making us imperfect people. And so every day I think we can learn from the day before, and we can strive to do better. And that's our goal, certainly, uh, within our team. And we're going to continue to try to do everything we can to help serve the American people to the best of our ability. Was it appropriate for Hope Hicks to be involved in drafting some of these statements, given her relationship with Mr. Porter? Uh, she was not part of a lot of the conversations that took place. Uh, I don't recall any of you being in the room to be able to say specifically what comments she made or didn't make. She's the White House Communications uh, Director and is an important and valuable member of the staff, and she has done a great job in that role. Sarah, Steve? Sarah, was, was there some discussion here about promoting Ron Porter to another job at the time this all blew up? Not that I'm aware of. I, just, I, I don't know the answer to that. Jeff? Sir, you said um, that the FBI, I said it was completed in, in late July, but you said a follow-up required more uh, field work on that. Was that because something that Rob Porter said in response to that, that the allegations weren't true? Or what required more field work follow-up? I wouldn't know the specifics. I can only uh, refer you back to the previous statement. If Julie. I can ask again, though, um, in an op-ed this morning in the Washington, Washington Post, the first wife of, a, of a Rob Porter said specifically of you, I expected a woman to do better. Based on what you know, do you believe you were personally misled, and do you have any regret for how you have explained this to the American people? Uh, look, as I said, we do the very best job we can every single day. I would never presume to understand uh, anything going on with that individual, uh, nor would I uh, think that she could presume uh, what's going on with me or the way that I'm responding. Uh, look, we've condemned domestic violence in every way possible. In fact, the president's budget that he released yesterday fully funds the Violence Against Women Act. We're looking for ways that we can take action to help prevent this from ever happening to anyone. Uh, and to uh, presume that I feel differently is simply a very strong mischaracterization of, of who I am and who this White House is and what our actions are focused on and what we're trying to do here. If I could ask one more. Where does John Kelly Jeff. stand as we sit here today in terms of if the president has confidence in him, why does he have confidence in him based on um, everything we've learned over the last week? Uh, look, I don't have anything further to add. The president has confidence in his chief of staff. We're going to continue trying to do the best we can to help the American people. Julie? So a clarification and a question. In July, when the FBI was sent back into the field to get more information, are you telling us that no senior staff, not Don McGahn, not Joe Hagan, not John Kelly, nobody in the senior staff in the West Wing was involved in that decision to tell them to go back and see if they could get more um, information on what Again, I, I can only, not that I'm aware of, I can't say with 100% certainty, but uh, not that I'm aware of, of any conversations uh, are between you, those individuals. Are you looking at now ways that you could change the process so that if a senior official in the White House is facing credible allegations of spousal abuse or some other criminal charge, that senior staff would be notified in a more timely way? I mean, this appears to have, if your timeline is accurate, taken more than a year. Look, uh, again, I think that this is a process that uh, the law enforcement and intelligence community should weigh in on and determine if changes should be made to the way that it's carried out. I'm not talking about their process. I'm talking about the process here where an investigation where serious allegations could surface and that nobody in the West Wing would be aware of that. But that would include those uh, agencies and those departments, so you couldn't exclude them from a conversation about what changes uh, should and need to be made to any program. I think that that would have to be uh, something that involved all of the stakeholders and something certainly uh, far beyond my purview to, to walk you through today. Sarah, so. uh, 
just following up on what Julie was asking, you're saying that law enforcement should weigh in, but you're the White House. You're in charge, uh, and this is your process. Should you not weigh in? It's actually take not our process. A, lot, a large number of the background component is run by the FBI. Other intelligence agencies weigh in. Again, what I said is that all of the stakeholders should be part of that discussion, and it should be looked at and determined whether or not changes need to be made to the process. Uh, uh, given that it, it, it impacts the White House staff, do you not want to request uh, an improved process here? Again, that would go beyond my scope that I can walk you through here today, but I think it's certainly a conversation that all of those stakeholders should have. Sarah, April. Sarah, a couple questions. Um, in light of everything that's going on, is there a review now, an internal review of all of those who have interim security clearances to see if they should stay or should they go? I can't speak about uh, whether or not different staff have interim or permanent security clearances. I'm asking, I'm asking about the process. All right. Is there a review of those who have interim passes to see if they're going to stay or they're going to go because in light of what's happening now? Yeah, my understanding is that has been ongoing for a while um, and that determination would be made outside of anything I can walk you through at and this you, point. And you spoke of um, fully funding the Violence Against Women Act. Uh, it's up for reauthorization. Tell me the price, um, how much the president is trying to put in that, and was that the price prior to all of this that's happened with these two people in the last week? I, I'm sorry, I'm not following your question. The budget. You, you're saying the president's going to fully fund uh, the reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act that's up in March. Um, how much, what is he putting in his budget? I'd have to look at the specific number, but it was rolled out in the budget that was presented you yesterday. You mentioned it, but is the number the number that's always been, or did was it just done? What have can you talk to us about the funding? I know is what that was what was requested has been uh, put into the president's budget. What was it, put in? Uh, it was in the budget that was rolled out yesterday. That's been part of the ongoing process. Well, we, we just we don't write a budget like in 20 minutes, so it's been part of something that's I been ongoing. That. I understand that. I understand that. But there's some things in that budget Mr. Mulvaney did not tell us about yesterday. That means you probably didn't ask those questions. Oh, but, but, I'm going to keep Sarah, going. Yeah, John, go ahead. He didn't give us that answer. Thanks he purposely a lot. didn't give us that information. Thanks a lot, Sarah. I, I wanted to just get some clarification from you regarding the testimony, the sworn testimony today by the FBI director. Laid out the timeline, and according to the FBI director's testimony, the FBI submitted a partial report on the investigation in question of Porter's uh, background check in March, and then a completed background investigation in late July. And yesterday when I was asking you about when the White House counsel uh, learned about Mr. Porter, had he learned before uh, the report in the Daily Mail last week, your reply to me was, the process for the background was ongoing and the White House had not received any specific papers regarding the completion of that background check. So those two statements, Mr. Uh, the FBI Director's statement, Mr. Ray, and your statement yesterday seem to be at odds with one another. Do you see anything that you'd like to clarify in terms of what I asked you uh, today based upon your answer yesterday? Yeah, as I said earlier, my understanding uh, is any information would have gone to the uh, personnel security office. That office had not completed their process in order to make a recommendation for adjudication to the White House. That was still ongoing and therefore a recommendation had not been made. You said the specific papers regarding the completion of the background check had not been received. That's part of that process that the White House Personnel Security Office plays, uh, run by career officials, and we hadn't received a recommendation from and that yet, office. Yet the FBI director said today under oath that the completed background investigation was actually submitted in late July. So which one is it? Uh, as I, Let me read this to you again. The White House Personnel Security Office, staffed by career officials, received information last year in what they considered to be the final background investigation report in November, but they had not made a final recommendation for adjudication to the White House because the process was still ongoing when Porter resigned. In the view of Personnel Security Office, the FBI's July report required significant additional investig investigatory field work before personnel security office could begin to evaluate the information for adjudication. 
uh, we find those statements to be consistent with one another. Jack, Mr. Mr. McGann, come Sorry, out John, here and answer any moving. questions that we may have questions. regarding what he knew and when he knew Sorry, it. Sir, you said repeatedly that um, you and the press team did the very best job you can to relay whatever information you know up there. Uh, so is there a feeling that Chief of Staff John Kelly has misled you and his colleagues on what he knew and when um, to, and set up the communication staff for failure to rely credible information to us over the past week in order to cover up the way that he handled the firing of Rob Porter? No, we're simply stating that we're giving you the best information that we're going to have. Obviously, the press team's not going to be as read in maybe as some el other elements at a given moment on a variety of topics, but we relay uh, the best and most accurate information that we have, and we get those from those individuals. Can you, just talk, about other, can you just talk about the other staffers who have been dismissed um, previously for not passing background checks and why Porter wasn't treated in a similarly timely uh, uh, My understanding is the same process was followed for all employees, and it's the same process that was used in previous administrations, and I, I can't comment on anybody else's dismissal. To live. Thank you, Sarah. You've talked <coughs> multiple times about sort of wanting to get, get us the best information that you have. This scandal has been going on for a week now, and we still don't have answers to the basic questions of sort of who knew what when, whether General I've, John I've Kelly done the knew. best I can to walk you through that process, as has Raj. We've done that pretty extensively, and I'd refer you back to all of the statements we've so given I'm on that. I'm going ask you whether you've spoken specifically to General John Kelly and to the White House Counsel to ask them these questions, because you said, I'm not aware or I'm not sure. I have, and this is the information that was given to me by those individuals. Yeah, I'm sure. question. Uh, House Speaker uh, Paul Ryan this morning on the uh, Fox Business Network said we've got to get out on entitlements. He talked about a structural deficit problem. He said we need to get our other partners in government, White House included, to be willing to do the kind of entitlement reform that we're willing to do in the House. Um, what does the President disagree with House Speaker Paul Ryan on that question of the structural deficit and the, and the problem of mandatory spending? I would have to ask him specifically on that question. I know uh, the president certainly would like to reduce the deficit, and it's one of the reasons that his budget uh, this time, uh, this budget reduced the deficit by $3 trillion, uh, which is one of the largest in history, and he's going to continue to look for ways to do that. The speaker says that it's the structural deficit for mandatory spending, not not the discretionary spending that is the driver. He's been saying this for years. Does the, was the president disagree with him? I, I know he said he doesn't agree with uh, that approach to entitlements. Why does he not agree with that assessment? I'd have to ask him what the specifics are that he doesn't agree with him on. Dave, we'll make this the last question. Uh, Majority Leader McConnell said today that the DACA negotiations have to be done by the end of this week. Did he give the White House a head up on that decision, and does that reflect any view from the White House that Democrats are not bargaining in good faith? Uh, for example, they didn't, they blocked a vote on sanctuary cities today. Uh, look, it's up to Congress to set the timeline. The President has laid out the priorities that he has for that legislation, and we're only going to support a legislation that deals with those four priorities that we've laid out. We hope Republicans and Democrats can come together uh, to a consensus to fix that problem and not kick the can down the road. Thanks, guys. Will John Kelly come out and answer some of these questions?